Hello there, Happy New Year. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Dr. John Flannery, and this is uh, my third uh, installment in my uh, smoking cessation lecture. Um, to summarize the first two tapes, um, I am an ex-smoker. I, I uh, grew up in a family of smokers, and I believe I was probably addicted to nicotine as a young boy. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> even though I never wanted to start smoking uh, and was almost militantly opposed to it uh, in my early teens, by the time I was 18, I uh, uh, started experiencing terrible cravings and uh, gave in to them and uh, found myself uh, addicted to nicotine by the time I was around 17 years old. Uh, <laughs> that ended my career in sports, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I never really quit except for a six-month period when I was 20 uh, until I reached the age of 50. So I smoked uh, passively about the first 20 years of my life and uh, deliberately the next 30 years of my life. So I have 50 years of, of nicotine addiction, uh, if you believe what they say about uh, Secondhand smoking, uh, it's every bit as harmful as, as uh, smoking uh, deliberately. Uh, so I, I've, I've had quite a, a long exposure to smoking and I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to breathe and haven't uh, developed a, a, a life-threatening uh, uh, illness. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, in the second tape, I, I uh, uh, talked about the uh, concept of addiction and uh, of course that <clears throat> involves understanding uh, the principle of tolerance to uh, a substance, uh, withdrawal, and uh, the uh, concept of, of cravings. And uh, we talked about how everybody, whether they're an addict or not, uh, understands this to some extent because it's the same thing that happens when you're hungry for food and when you crave uh, something delicious. Uh, it's just short-circuited when you get addicted to uh, a substance or a behavior. And uh, the pleasure centers of your brain uh, nag you to death with cravings until you uh, get something, get that nicotine or whatever it is you're craving. Uh, and then if you don't do it, you have the additional torture of withdrawal. Uh, <clears throat> so in order to, uh, to help you to quit, uh, I tried to give you some ideas on uh, mental imagery of what these things are so that you can uh, successfully implement a smoking cessation uh, plan in your life. And I want to reassure you at this point that there's no reason why you ever have to smoke again if you want to quit. Uh, I'm going to now give you the tools uh, for, for <clears throat> how to quit, and if you stick to them, I believe that <clears throat> uh, a good number of you could, could today quit smoking. If you quit and fail, you can go back to the, using these tools and, and quit again. So uh, tell yourself, if you have to, that you're just going to quit for today. Uh, and, and tomorrow you wake up and, and uh, try to stay quit. Uh, do whatever it takes, but uh, I believe you can do it. So here's, here's, uh, here's the steps I used. Um, I developed the, the mental imagery I told you about. I realized that uh, the uh, craving for, for cigarettes uh, was a craving to poison myself. And I told myself that for a reason. I'd been telling myself so long that I needed uh, nicotine to feel normal and to function, I need to counter that with, with a, a sobering thought that would allow me to be uh, resolute and stick with my plan to quit smoking. So I had to get some imagery for, for craving that <clears throat> uh, uh, spoiled the mood, so to speak. Nicotine is poisonous. If you take uh, enough of it, I think the do lethal dose is 0.4 milligrams, it actually kills you. Um, not being a doctor and understanding some physiology, I know some of the things that, uh, the ways that nicotine poisoned me. 
Um, and I know that when I've been exposed to it since I quit smoking, uh, that I get to actually feeling sick. Uh, so I, I, I got that imagery in my head that when I had a craving, um, <clears throat> that what I was craving was poison. Uh, it, uh, it didn't necessarily make the cravings that less intense, but it just put a little damper on uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the tendency I had to feel sorry for myself. Uh, it's pretty hard to feel sorry for yourself that you can't get some poison. Okay, then I uh, had some mental imagery about uh, craving uh, as far as how long craving lasts. And I suggested that you think of craving as uh, a process that is set in motion and uh, dissipates over a period of about 15 minutes. And an example that always worked for me was to think of, of a craving as a little fire, of a pile of leaves burning. Uh, if you don't put more fuel on that little pile of leaves in about 10, 15 minutes, all the leaves will burn up and the fire will go out. And that's the way a craving is. It's a little process, a whirlwind, a spinning top, a little burning flame. Think of it as you will, but it is self limited and in about 15 minutes it will go away. Uh, <clears throat> so then uh, I had to develop some techniques for what to, to do about these uh, withdrawals and cravings. So let's, let's, uh, let's discuss withdrawals. If you have serious withdrawals and you uh, uh, cannot uh, simply cold turkey stop, um, you're not any different from most people. It's pretty unpleasant to go through withdrawals, and you don't have to. Uh, my only suggestion to you is that um, you pick a method that you won't uh, uh, get, get hooked on. And so, for example, the first time I tried to uh, quit uh, smoking, I started chewing tobacco. Well, <laughs> it wasn't long before I was enjoying that as much as I enjoyed smoking, and so I, I became... Uh, addicted to that. Uh, when I say addicted, I mean that I was going at it wholeheartedly and enjoying it. Uh, and the same thing can happen with a lot of the other substitute forms of nicotine, such as nicotine gum, electronic cigarettes, uh, nicotine nasal spray. Uh, these uh, other forms of, of, uh, of nicotine replacement uh, uh, have associated with them uh, a quick release of nicotine into your system, and a lot of people find that pleasurable. And so if you, if you take your nicotine in a pleasurable way, you may have a hard time uh, avoiding getting hooked on that uh, alternative method of using nicotine. So <clears throat> I've seen a number of people over the years that have gotten addicted to nicotine chewing gum, or they become addicted to um, uh, <clears throat> electronic cigarettes or uh, dipping or chewing uh, uh, tobacco and uh, <clears throat> and I, I imagine some people have actually gotten hooked to addicted to the uh, um, patches but one thing about patches is it releases the nicotine in a fairly slow continuous way so uh, there isn't as much pleasure associated with the patches and uh, you won't tend to reinforce enforce your cravings uh, if you use uh, a patch as your nicotine substitute. Uh, with regard to Chantix, I have to confess to you I don't have a lot of experience with it. I never tried using it myself. I didn't tend to prescribe it for my patients over the years because uh, of the warnings they have about uh, the bad effects it can have on the mood. I have known some people that successfully quit using Chantix if your doctor prescribes it for you, I'm not here to tell you not to do it. But <clears throat> if you ask me what, what I recommend, I would recommend the patch. Uh, why, why take the risk of causing your mood to get, get uh, seriously affected? <clears throat> and there actually is a measurable suicide rate in people using Chantix. So uh, I'm not a big proponent of it. I'm not totally opposed to it either. Um, I'm sure more people die from smoking than they do from trying to use Chantix. So uh, if that's what it takes for you to quit, go ahead and use it. But um, I think 
as far as uh, the uh, the least uh, dangerous form of uh, substitution, uh, I think, is probably the patch. Okay, let's get to the mechanics of the patch. Uh, I found that I had an allergic reaction to every patch I used. Uh, I tried several different brands. Um, I talked to uh, somebody in the business of uh, selling patches and they told me a little trick that I could try and I did. I got some of the uh, nasal cortisone spray that, that people use for nasal allergy and I sprayed that on my skin, let it dry, put the patch on and I didn't get much of a reaction then when I wore the patch. Uh, <clears throat> most people can find a brand they can wear without having an allergic reaction. Uh, I found that if I wore the patch at night that I didn't sleep very well and uh, I believe that's because uh, I wasn't used to using nicotine at night. Uh, so I, I would take my patch off at night. If you can wear the patch all night long, that's okay. I think it does help to, uh, to go a period of time without the patch because uh, that allows your body to uh, return to a normal level uh, as far as having receptors for nicotine. And until those, uh, those physiologic changes take place, uh, you won't be through with your withdrawals. So if you can go without wearing the patch at night, uh, that'll probably help you get through nicotine withdrawal faster. Uh, the only risk there is to that is in the morning when you wake up, you will be uh, uh, wanting that nicotine fix and you might give in to a, a craving uh, and light up. So uh, if you have to wear the patch at night, that's okay. You can just uh, uh, take your time uh, tapering the patches off. What, what strength to start with? Uh, I think most people can start with uh, Tri-21. That's the highest patch. Uh, if you feel okay with that, then, then use the 21. If that seems too strong, then go ahead and, and uh, uh, get the next layer level now, which is the 14. And the, the third level they make is a 7. So there's three levels of nicotine patches, 7, 14, and 21. Uh, I found 21 was a little too strong for me. I got nauseated on it, uh, I got headaches with it, I felt uh, yucky. So I went ahead and, and bought a, a box of the 14s and started wearing them. And uh, I didn't have withdrawals on, on either of those patches, but I didn't feel as, as uh, sick wearing the, the 14 as I did wearing the 21. I wore 14 patches for, 14 strength patches for about <clears throat> A month um, and then uh, by then I had uh, uh, gotten pretty comfortable with dealing with cravings and I felt like it was time to try to taper down so uh, instead of get, buying seven patches I had 14s and I had 21s I'd used up my 20 my 14s so I, I thought hey maybe I could cut these 21s in half and th that would be going stepping down from a 14 to about a 10 and it worked uh, so I got to use up most of my 21 patches and uh, <clears throat> uh, step down a little more gradually than going from, from a 14 patch to a 7. Well, after I wore half of a, 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 four, a 21 patch for about two weeks or maybe a month, I can't remember exactly, uh, I then went down to a 7. And uh, I think what I actually did was I bought some more 14s and cut them in half. And I wore the, uh, a seven uh, patch for about uh, two to four weeks. Again, I, I'm not sure exactly how long, but I wasn't in any rush to taper off the patches. I figured I've been using nicotine so long that uh, it probably wouldn't hurt me that much to use nicotine for, for a few months more, especially since I was gradually withdrawing from it. Uh, <clears throat> then after I had worn the uh, uh, seven strength patch for a while. I tried leaving it off altogether. I experienced uh, some significant withdrawals. So I got some seven patches, cut them in half, and uh, I found that took care of my withdrawals and uh, I didn't have to uh, suffer as much. So I wore a half of the seven for, for a period of time. Again, two, four weeks, I'm not sure. Uh, after I had done so, uh, I'd gone for about uh, two to four weeks on that strength. 
I, I tried uh, leaving off the, uh, the patch and uh, I felt a little bit irritable. So what I did was if I had a bad day, I would just go ahead and put on half of a, a seven. And uh, I ended up wearing a patch about every other day then. Uh, and I did that for a week or two. And then uh, gradually, uh, I didn't really uh, notice any more withdrawal symptoms when I didn't put a patch on. So I just stopped wearing them. So in about uh, two to three months, I gradually tapered myself off of nicotine using the patches the way I've described. Uh, started out with 14, then half of a, a 21, then I went to 7, then I went to half of a 7, uh, then I went to half of a 7 about every other day, and then I quit. All right, uh, I've never had to use nicotine again uh, since then, but I still have some patches left. They're, they're expired, but uh, I imagine if I uh, put them on, I would get, a, I would experience a nicotine rush. Uh, but I've told myself before I ever smoke a cigarette again, I will at least try wearing a patch. Thank God I haven't had to do that. Cravings. That's the second part of the of the problem. That was the the thing that uh, drove me crazy the first time I tried to quit. And it's something that you will unfortunately have to experience the rest of your life. The good news is, if you develop some techniques of dealing with cravings, uh, that the cravings will, will gradually get less. You will develop confidence uh, in your ability to ignore them, and you'll get better and better at it. And uh, uh, as time goes on, they'll come less and less often. And as long as you uh, keep that mental imagery we talked about, that a craving is, is an urge to poison yourself, and if you uh, use the techniques that we're going to talk about now uh, to ignore cravings, you'll be able to succeed every time. Um, <clears throat> so the, the techniques that I used, uh, uh, realizing that craving was just a mental obsession, uh, I would focus on something else. Uh, back in my smoking days, when I needed to ignore a craving, what I would use was delayed gratification. I would tell myself, okay, uh, well, as soon as I get out of this church meeting or whatever I was involved in, uh, where I couldn't smoke, I'd know that I would be able to light up. And, and that, would, that would sort of pacify my mind. I could put the craving in the back of my head and not worry about it, and, and I, I would be okay. Well, when you quit smoking, you can't use delayed gratification, so what, you have to use some other technique. And what I, I would do is, uh, if I was working, I would just concentrate on my job. If I was out in the yard doing something, I'd concentrate on what I was working at. Uh, I would try to intensely focus on something other than my craving. Uh, if I was sitting alone in my house uh, in the middle of the night and I was having a craving, I'd turn on my computer and start playing a video game or something. Uh, or I'd, I'd get out some cards and play solitaire the old-fashioned way. Or I'd get out a, a puzzle book and uh, do, concentrate on doing a, a puzzle like Sudoku or, or a, a crossword puzzle or even a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, sure enough, uh, the more I did that, the better I got at it. Uh, I, I began to get confident that, that I could ignore cravings. Um, uh, looking back on them, uh, I, I have an additional imagery that I, that I use. Uh, I think of cravings as a screaming child. And if you've ever uh, been around screaming children, you know that they're very hard to ignore. Well, uh, the more I practice my um, uh, technique of ignoring cravings, uh, the less loudly that screaming child was in my mind. And uh, uh, soon it was just a murmur. Uh, and uh, to this day, uh, I still have cravings. Uh, I've had some uh, fairly intense cravings over the years, but uh, uh, what, what I've noticed is that if I get to uh, thinking back on smoking, uh, and uh, uh, wishing I could smoke and start feeling much for, sorry for myself uh, that I can't smoke, that that's when my cravings tend to get pretty intense. So I try to avoid that the best I can and uh, get out my little bag of tricks uh, every time I 
I have a, a craving that, that enters my conscious mind and uh, I've been able to uh, succeed in uh, going through cravings, one craving at a time, and not resort to smoking. Okay, so the day I quit, um, I don't remember the exact date, but I remember what I did. Uh, I uh, made up my mind I was going to quit that day. Um, the night before, I, uh, I had already decided that that was the day I was going to try to quit, and I said a very serious prayer, and it went something like this. God, please help me to finally quit. I don't want to use nicotine anymore. Previously, I had prayed something like this. God, please don't let me die from smoking. Please let me get away with it. You know, uh, please don't let me get lung cancer. Uh, I never really asked God to help me to quit. Uh, but the day I finally quit, I said a sincere prayer. Uh, if you're a person with shaky faith, uh, and I think uh, there's probably a lot of you out there that maybe your faith is a little shaky, mine is sometimes, then just be honest and say a prayer like this. God, if you're out there, if you're listening to me, please help me, help me to quit. And while you're at it, you can say, and help, help my faith get stronger. And uh, <clears throat> I say that exact prayer from time to time, and I think God understands and, and will help you that way. Okay? Um, and, and if today's the day that you're going to quit, um, you could even pause this message and, uh, and say a prayer right now to that effect. Uh, then the next step uh, is uh, actually uh, putting on the patch and, uh, and uh, being prepared to deal with the cravings. Uh, I predict that if you uh, uh, utilize these techniques, you'll be successful. Uh, and I'd really like to hear about it from you. Uh, there's a, a spot in here at the end of this uh, uh, message for you to leave a comment. I'd like to hear your comments about these uh, tapes. Uh, I'd like to hear a follow-up from you uh, if you succeed in quitting, and uh, I would also like to hear a follow-up from you if you think I could uh, express myself in a different way. Please be gentle and say it in a nice way, and uh, I'll consider re-doing re, uh, these tapes from time to time and updating them. And I may have some sequel tapes uh, discussing successes in quitting. Uh, <clears throat> I've already thought of one I'd like to do uh, called The Lies of Addiction uh, because uh, that is a big part of the addictive process, uh, the lies that we tell ourselves that allow us to keep using. Um, but today, let's make, let's make a plan to quit and uh, get out your tools, get your patches or whatever you're going to use to... Uh, uh, subst substitute your uh, nicotine and, and taper off of it. Um, say your prayers. Uh, remember when you finally do initiate a plan every day. Say a prayer asking God to keep helping you and uh, thanking God for um, the success that you have had. Uh, think of that as your maintenance. Uh, just as you tell your spouse that you love 